Hello everyone, welcome to the final installation of the DoorDash data project series. Today we're going to dive into classical machine learning and how we can implement it in a data model from our ongoing data project from DoorDash. If you haven't watched our previous videos, we'll leave the links down in the description box for you. Let's take a look at the assignment. The goal of this take home assignment is to build a model to predict the estimated time taken for delivery, which is defined here as the time taken between the order creation and the actual order delivery. In the previous videos, we have created predictive features and prepared the data for modeling. We have removed redundant features. Collinearity and multicollinearity. We've also reduced the dimensions of the data set by eliminating the insignificant features. And we've performed feature scaling. Now that our data is finally set up, it's ready to be applied to the machine learning model. To be sure, we will apply six different algorithms that will help us to find the best performance model. Moreover, we will also select four different feature set sizes, which are 40 selected features, 20, 10, and the full feature set. These features are selected by the genie's importance. That's how we will measure the effect of using sorted data sets according to genie's importance. And also, we will use three different scalers, which are standard, min, max, and no scalar. So as a result, we will have many different options and we will get 72 results, which include six different algorithms, four different feature set sizes, and the three scalars. That gives you 72 results. So let's first load the libraries. Now let's begin with defining a custom function. With this function, we will apply several regression tasks, and then we will calculate the error for each task. The main reason for us to choose different options is to find the best performance model. That's how we will see all the algorithm calculations at once and comparing them is going to be easier. So we will define four different dictionaries containing our different parameters. So the first one is going to be predict dictionary to store our different parameters, regression model, feature set size and scalar name and RMSC. So a regression model contains six different models, for example, Ridge, Decision Tree, Random Forest, XGBoost, LGBM, and MLP. And we've got four feature data sets, full, selected 40, 20, and 10. And to remind you again, our features are sorted by Gini importance and scalars contain different scalars like standard, min, max, and not scale. Now we will write three for loops inside each other as we see over here. So these take the regression models, feature sets, and scalar names in this previous dictionary. And then we will calculate according to the scalar by defining the conditional statement. So first we will calculate without scalar by train test split. And then we will use our make regression custom function to apply different regressions. Second, we will apply scalar and train test split and we'll apply our make regression function to apply different regressions. Additionally, we will use the inverse transform function. Therefore, we did scaling. Our feature scale should turn back for future interpretation. Then we will store all the calculations into predict dictionary. And now let's run that. So in the end, it will calculate 72 different predictions at once. And finally, we will be able to compare the results by adding them to the data frame. Now, this bit is going to take a while. Now, let's save that predict dictionary, which contains whole calculations to the data frame and see the data frame for evaluation. And here we are. So the output tells us that using different scalars does not have much effect on the model. That's why we will choose a standard scalar and just continue using that. And choosing different feature sizes also has very slight effect on the model. So we will continue with 40 selected features, 
So now let's see the bar plot for that. So it seems that we have high errors through all models, so there is still room for improvement. Now let's change the problem a little bit by predicting prep duration and then we will calculate the actual total delivery duration after the prediction. To do that, we will subtract the store to consumer driving duration and the estimated order place duration from the actual total delivery duration to find the prep time. Okay, now we will define two dictionaries which will contain our parameters, scalar and feature size. So as we decided earlier, our scalar will be standard and the feature size will be 40. Since the model will be the same, we won't define another dictionary for that. We will use the previous one. So let's choose a parameter according to the previous results. So here we are. Now we will use three different for loops to select the feature set, scalar, and the model names in their dictionaries. Then we will define prep time as a target variable and select our features, but we will drop two features. Why? Because we calculate our target variable by using these features. To avoid collinearity upfront, we can just drop these features right now. So we've written the three for loops. We will split the dataset to save the indices and then we will apply a scalar and split the data set and of course as we did earlier we will use our custom make regression function and inverse the process to interpret the results better and calculate the rmsc and lastly we will add the results into the predict dictionary now let's run that okay so here are the results and according to the results lgbm performs better than the rest of the regression models so I think we will just choose LGBM as a model and let's repeat the calculation. So we're going to do the same thing again with LGBM as our model. So this is the error. Now let's define a dictionary to choose the best performance model and extract the prep duration predictions. It contains the actual total delivery duration, estimated store to consumer driving duration, and the estimated order to place duration by using our indices. Then we will also add the prep duration prediction by using the Y predict. All right, it is time to convert that dictionary into data frame because we will make calculations to find the sum total delivery duration. After that, we will find an error by using the mean squared error method and it needs an array to make calculation. Okay, we've calculated the Y predict. It's time to do the math and calculate the sum total delivery duration by adding the estimated store to consumer driving duration and the estimated order to place duration to the prep duration prediction. So here's a formula. Let's run that. And here's our sum total delivery duration. Now, since we calculate the sum total delivery duration, let's calculate the mean squared error between the actual total delivery duration and the sum total delivery duration. The error is still high, so I think it's time to use another approach. Let's use our predicted duration prediction and estimated store to consumer driving duration to calculate the actual total delivery duration. Now, first, let's select our features. In this approach, we're selecting our features, prep duration, estimated store to consumer driving duration, and the ordered place duration, all right, to calculate the actual total delivery duration. So let's run that. And now let's split the data set into train and test like we did over here. Now we will define the regression models dictionary and add six different regression model names into it like we did earlier. After that, we will use for loop and our custom make regression function to select the model from our regression model dictionary and print the RMSC. Now we will define the regression models dictionary and add the six different regression model names like we did earlier. After that, we will use a for loop and our custom make regression function to select the model from our regression model dictionary to print the RMSC. Sounds straightforward, but let's take a look at the RMSC of the different regression models. 
Alright, it looks like this approach has better performance, so we can choose this one as our official solution. So as you can see, our rate drops nearly half from our last result. So this model's performance is way better than our earlier results, which had errors of 2000 and above. So this is our official solution. Since we already use many different machine learning methods, it's time to use deep learning methods to compare. Because it will be deep learning model, our model has too many hyperparameters. So let's first load the library. Now it's time to create a function by using both Keras and TensorFlow to create a model that predicts the actual total delivery time. Our model is a sequential model, dense layer with ReLU and linear activation functions. As an optimizer, we're using the stochastic gradient descent and mean square error as a loss function. Also, root mean square will be calculated. So now let's just call our function. To use our custom model, first we will define a model name and a scalar name. Then we will select our features. We will split the data set and apply scalar. All right, now it's time to apply our custom function. By the way, one epoch shows the data set passed from the beginning until the end for one time. After that, we will apply RMSE with inverse transform. Because we apply scalar, we should reverse the process back and then calculate the RMSE. And lastly, we will append the results to the predict dictionary. So here we are. Like we said earlier, epoch means one cycle over the entire data set. And the loss quantifies the difference between actual values and the predicted ones from the entire data set. Now let's draw a graph to see the relation between epoch and loss. So here we are, the result is close to our previous result. So our official solution will be LGBM and linear regression on top. Now we could find better results by tuning the hyperparameters in ANN uh, with many different methods. Yet by taking into consideration the time and effort, this model is also promising and fast. Of course, this will be arranged according to your project needs. Yet for now, this result is good enough for us. So there we are. Thank you for sticking with us. I know it was a challenging and a long project, but I sincerely hope that you learned something from our videos. And if you liked our data project series, then like the videos and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to check out our Stratastretch platform for more take-home assignments and data projects. 